Hey my awesome people, Hamza here and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be creating this checkout page using Elementor and WooCommerce. Let's get started. Before we actually get started, in the previous video, I showed you how to create this cart page using Elementor and WooCommerce. And I took you through every step on how you can add custom buttons and custom stylings for a couple of features on this page. Now in this video, I want to show you how to create a checkout page just like this over here. And I will not only show you how you can even go ahead and hide some fields on this checkout page, but also on how to integrate with a couple of payment gateways so that you can start receiving payments from your clients. Just a disclaimer before we get started. I want to keep this video really short, but I'll try my level best to make sure that I don't leave out some details. Why I'm doing that is because I want to make it easy for you to have a short video that you can easily follow up on and get things done. With that said, let's get started. Currently, this is how our checkout page actually looks like. Really boring WooCommerce checkout page, just like you see over right here. But just in a minute, we are going to get this up and looking nice. So we are going to go back here to our pages. And the first thing I'm going to actually delete this default checkout page that is imported once you install WooCommerce. Maybe you would ask, why am I deleting this page? You know, when I'm editing with Elementor and I use the default pages from WooCommerce, there are some layout conflicts with WooCommerce and Elementor. So what I do is to create a new page, give it the same name, and then just style it up the way I want. I'll permanently delete this page. I'll come back here to pages and then I just create a new page. I'll give it the same name. I'll publish that page and then I can edit that page with Elementor. So there are some features that we can actually borrow from our previous pages. Like when you see on our already created checkout page, we have this hero section and we also use this hero section on our cart page. So what we are going to do is to open up our cart page, copy this section, make updates to the content and then we are good to go. I'll use the Elementor finder. So I'll now open up my cart page with Elementor. So what I'll do right now is simply copy this container, come to my pages and then come straight to my checkout page, edit with Elementor. I'll paste my hero container, paste. Great. Now this over here will update automatically because it's actually a dynamic widget. So when I preview, it should now be showing checkout this over here. Now the styling and the responsive settings were all done previously on the cart page. So I don't have to go into that. Next, what I'm going to do is to add another container. So container. Now I'll come over here to the widgets area and then look up for my checkout widget. This over here from Elementor. Good. Now what we have to do is to style up our, you know, headings and then subheadings. And you already know that we set up our global style, so we don't have so much work to do. All we have to do is to point the relevant style to the relevant section of our checkout. That means for the titles and the buttons and the text. So I'll select my main container, come to the advanced options. I'll unlink and at the top, I'll give it a padding of 40 and bottom a padding of 40. Now I'll select my checkout widget. Over here we have some settings. Just like you remember on the cart page, we had to choose on the layout options whether to use a single column or two columns. So if you choose the one column option, this is how your checkout page would look like. But I prefer to use the two column option. And then we can as well stick the right column side in case you want that your client has that experience of the sticky column. And now over here we have the billing options or the fields for the billing options. And then down below here we have the additional information, like for example, down below here. So we can actually enable or disable this. And before we actually didn't have this option for Elementor, but once they release the checkout widget or the WooCommerce updates, now we have the option to disable the additional notes over down below here, which is, which is sweet. And then here your order. So the order option down below here, the summary. And then we have the coupon option, the coupon section, sorry. And then the section where you actually make the payments. And once we integrate with our payment gateway, then we'll be able to choose or select between the payment gateways that our client can actually use or that our client can choose to pay with. I hope that actually makes sense. So now when we go to the styling options, so we have the section option, which enables us to kind of style up how these sections are going to look like. For example, we can change the background color for the sections. And in this case, I want to make it pure white. And you can even go ahead and add padding. Like so you can add an extra padding of like 50 or 500. That's how it would look like. But that would be 
crazy and then you can as well add margins and paddings you can add borders to your sections so for example over here i can say a solid border and i want all over a border of 10 so that's how our sections would look like but we don't want to have any borders on our sections so now let's go to the typography option and this is where we can set up how our styles for the titles for the secondary titles descriptions messages checkout boxes radio buttons i'm going to speed up this section and style up everything once i'm done i'll take you through i'll take you through the settings of what i did for every section and then we are good to go So just to take you through what I did was to set up our typography by using our already created styles. So for, for example, for the titles, I used the main color black and typography, we used our title font style. Subtitles, we also style them up using our styles, just like I showed you the radio buttons. Yeah, the link colors, this over here, for example, here, this is a link and this is a link and another link that would show up in case someone wants to apply a coupon. This is the style for that. Then for the forms and the form fields, we had to actually style up how our labels look like and also the typography for everything over here, including the background style. Then the order summary section, which is this over here, summarizes the order. So over there, I went ahead and styled up everything, for example, for the items, the color for the items, and then also for the titles and totals. So this is the title and this is the totals. So those have a, a different color, but the same font style. And then for the purchase button that went ahead and we styled it up differently because we want it to be unique on the page, which is over right here. I'll simply update, go ahead and then preview. Maybe I would add some padding on our sections. Maybe a 35 would look good. Yeah, that's better. It looks much better. Now you see that all our links are having, are having our secondary color on normal and on hover it changes to black the same over here and the same over here and you realize that if someone clicks over here the coupon field will show up with a button now the other thing we we'll look into uh, are the responsive modes so for example here on the tablet looks good let me look into the mobile this as well looks good but you can as well go ahead and style up each and every individual section how it looks like all right so i'll now exit the responsive mode now let's talk about how can you disable some of the fields here on your checkout page like this checkout page has a lot of information that is re being required from the client to fill in in order to make a single purchase i wouldn't want to have this kind of experience so most of the times i prefer to hide some of these fields on the checkout so that i give a better experience to my web visitor and there are two options or you can use one in combination with the other. Some themes enable you from the customizer to disable some of the form fields over right here on your checkout page. Like for example, Astra, the theme I'm using, if I head back here to my dashboard and head over here to my customizer option, I'll come straight here to the WooCommerce option and come over here to the checkout page. And now we have these three options over here that we can disable. The company field name or the company name field the address line to, and then the phone field. So we can come over here and say hide option, hide option, and then hide option. Or we can as well make any of these options required or option for someone to fill in. So in this case, I'm going to publish. So I'll reload this. You see, we don't have the company option. We don't have the address line to option and we don't have the phone field. But ideally, I would like to collect the phone number of or someone who purchases a product from my website because I would use that when it comes to deliver a product. I would come back here to my customizer and I'll make this to be optional. And I'll leave the other fields actually hidden. So I'll say update, come over here to my preview page, I'll reload. And now you realize that we have our phone field back and is optional now the other way you can use to hide some of these checkout fields is by adding a custom woocommerce function to your functions.php to hide some of these fields so for example i'm going to add a custom function to hide the address fields from the checkout page and to do that i'm going to come over here to the customizer obviously i'll exit the customizer and I'm going to go to my theme editor, but currently since I'm using the Elementor Cloud, they don't avail us the option to edit our theme files by default. So I use a plugin to do that. 
If you're not using Elementor Cloud, you have the option to go straight to the theme files or to the theme editor, and then you are able to do that. So I'm going to install my plugin theme editor, activate the plugin. When I come now here to appearance, you see I have the option to access the theme editor. I'll go straight to the theme editor option. And now we want to edit the functions.php file. So I'll select that. And this function.php file is for our child theme. I'll come over here to the very last line and I'm going to add my custom function. And this will remove all address fields on, on checkout page. This is simply a comment to guide me and you to know why you added a certain function at a later date. So what I'll do now is update. I'm going to come over here and then have a preview on our checkout page and you realize that the address fields are all going to actually disappear. That's it. So we don't have the address fields here anymore. But the question is, is it the right thing to do? Or don't you want to have the address fields on your checkout page? It goes back on what business you are running. So for example, if you are selling digital products, why would you have to collect the address fields for the clients? You would simply want their names, their phone, their email, and maybe their country. But in case you sell physical products that you have to ship to your client's address, then this is not the best advice for you. I'll uninstall my theme editor plugin because now I no longer need it. I've simply edited my files and I'm good to go. Now, the other thing we have to do is to configure payment gateway so that our clients are able to actually make payments. And to do that, we have to go back to WooCommerce. So back to our dashboard, WooCommerce, come to settings, click on the payments option. And here we have a couple of payment options available. We can enable WooCommerce payments. This actually requires you to create an account on the WooCommerce website so that you can enable these payment gateways to work. You can enable direct bank transfer. You can enable cash delivery. In this case, I am going to enable a cash on delivery. So I'll say cash on delivery. I'll save changes. I'm going to go to the live page. And notice here that now we are going to have a payment option which is cash upon delivery. And now here I can agree to the terms and condition and then I can say place my order. Great, so my order has now been placed. If we go back here to the orders, so WooCommerce orders. Now we have this order from Hamza 17 seconds ago and it was $67. And if we now come over here and we actually read through the order details, here comes the order details and what the client ordered, how much total was. If you can remember correctly that we had deleted the, the initial checkout page, now we need to go and point our newly created checkout page to our WooCommerce page settings and as well as adding it over here on our menu. First, we'll come back to appearance menus. And with our main menu selected, we are going to come over here, select our checkout page, add it to the menu position it where we want it, and then save changes. Now when we come over here to our site, reload. Now we have our checkout page located in our menu. Next, we are going to go to our Elementor site settings, inside Elementor, site settings, come to WooCommerce, and for the checkout page option, select the page called checkout. Good, update. So if for example, someone is on your cart page and now they click on the checkout button, they'll be redirected straight to the checkout page. Great, so there are a couple of questions I know running in your head. How do I enable another payment gateway? How do I receive payments from PayPal users or from Stripe users? What are different payment gateways that I can use on my WooCommerce store? I actually think I have to make a dedicated video for that because if we are to add that in this video, then it's going to be a little bit longer. So let's make an agreement that in the next video, I am going to explain to you and take you through every bit on how you can integrate with different payment platforms, which plugins to use, which payment gateways to use. If you are a seller based in the US, which is the best platform or payment gateway for you to use. If you are one based in Africa, which one is the best payment gateway for you to use? Because hey, I have been there and I have been sold to, so I can understand the pitfalls and the pains clients and site owners or merchants go through in that process. So with that said, allow me to close up on this video. It has been so much fun to create this checkout page video because 
I know most of you people have issues on customizing your checkout pages and how to make them look good for your site visitors and being able to take you through every step on how you can make it look good and finally enable that people are able to pay you for your product that you're selling. It's been a pleasure. So in case you like this video, make sure that you give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And please remember to come back and check out the other video on how to integrate with different payment gateways for your WooCommerce website. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Goodbye.